it's uh, about 100 degrees today so the camera keeps overheating or it kept overheating so I, I divided the video up into little segments between 9 and 15 minutes so it wouldn't shut off on me uh, because of overheating. Anyway, what I did was I tried to make these um, these barbs as sharp and delicate as possible uh, in a short period of time. Uh, I did work on some other ones before this. Let me show you. This dime is just for size comparison. Okay, so let me... I got some other ones I made before this. Alright. I did make some smaller uh, serrations on, on some of these other ones. But there was some issues on each one, so I didn't put those on video. Although I did film some of these, or I started filming some of these, but they would break at different points, at different points in time. All right, so this one is an obvious break here on the uh, the barb. Okay, but this brownish material is very unstable, so the more of that material you have in here or for this particular stone the more fragile it is it has little pockets I don't know if you can see it anyway it has little hollow pockets in the in that brownish material all right so the issue with this one was a little too thick I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to show this video uh, the, the notches were okay except I blew out uh, this side here. This one was going good and then I blew out that side and then I shut off the video and I finished it. These bar, these uh, serrations are a little bit more delicate than this one here. Now this one here I blew off the tip. It was a lot longer but I finished it out. I also uh, made this little stem a little too long for my taste. This one here I blew off both of the uh, barbs tip came out pretty good. This, this greenish yellowish material is pretty good. It's the same as, or has the same consistency as the lighter color. And this was just made very quickly so I could see how uh, consistent the material is. Now with nice material, with pretty material, a lot of times it has voids and weaknesses and cracks. And this is no exception here. This one was very difficult for me to finish a point without breaking something on it okay that's why I made this one, this one kind of wide I didn't flake all the way across this face there's still some of the original flake scar and it is still kind of thick but I didn't want to go for thinness like some of these other some of these other ones that one's pretty thin this is the, by far the easiest shape to make on difficult stone just a simple triangle and it works just as well as anything else uh, serrations, they're cool and everything, but uh, I think there's been tests done and uh, they don't really add very much to the penetrating power. Now they might add to the cutting power once the arrowhead is within the wound. That would make sense, but the penetration power, they've done some tests on it and it penetrates the same, but I think maybe the residual cutting afterwards is what makes a difference. Okay, so I didn't go for really delicate serrations on this. Uh, again, pressed for time. I didn't want to spend all day, you know, a couple hours or whatever. Let me just show you the translucency on these. This material is pretty good. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, it naps like glass almost. It is heat treated to 350 degrees for four hours like what I usually do. It is some type of agate and I've seen it before somewhere I just don't know what it's called. This is the one I made on the video. It's all from that uh, agate that I spalled 
on the previous video. Let's see. This is the uh, the biface I got from this chunk. But uh, the flakes. Someone asked me about the flakes. Why I was saving those, and these are what I was making, or what I was planning on making from the flakes. These little small arrowheads. Now this is the type of serration I'm going to get more into in later videos. You see how that works where the main blade is straight behind the serrations and the serrations are spaced apart. I took a lot of time to do that side and then I ended up blowing off the barb. All right, So I didn't finish it. But if in real life I probably would still haft that and use it. It's still a very functional arrowhead. All of these are functional. It's just uh, do, getting it on video to be uh, pretty is the hard part. Okay, let's see what else. Oh yeah, I wanted to make this type of notch. On a lot of uh, points out here in Texas, it terminates in a very small pop-out. Now these other ones are rounded off, as you can see here. This is common too. But I notice on some of the points, like Perdiz in particular, the terminations are these small pop-outs. You need, you need a, a thin tool, a very strong bone or antler, to do those pop-outs at the very end. And they just leave them as is. They don't dress them up or try to uh, round them off. Okay. It saves time, too. So if you have to make a lot of them, it saves time. All right. So... That's it for this video. Uh, the agate was difficult to work because of the imperfections. Uh, the imperfections also make the material look really cool. But you'll have a hard time napping it. You need a lot of patience. Uh, just for, uh, just FYI. But yeah, the the nice parts on this agate are very nice, and the, the difficult areas are very difficult to nap through. Okay, and uh, let me bring the diamond again for the size. These are uh, a lot of people call these gem points or bird points. Okay, that's it.